Talking dogs are depressed. Oh my God, it's so sad. They're forced to press these buttons. I don't feel like that makes me a bad person. Though. Why don't I add a cuss button? A lot of people say that I talk too fast for her. We have been using ASC for communication since 2020. A lot of people think that Farabee gets treats for talking. People are saying like, let her be a dog. She needs to go outside and play more. Good girl, yeah. People want to know how they know what button to press. Hey guys, so today Farabee and I want to talk to you about some frequently asked questions that we get with AIC and just things around that and then some common misconceptions. So in case you're new here, I'm Jen and this is Farabee. Farabee is four and a half years old. She's a standard poodle and she has 105 words on her word board. Um, she's also my service dog. Those two things have nothing to do with each other. It just happens to both be facts about her. I have PTSD. There's more about that on my channel if you're interested in learning about me. I'll link a playlist below for you. But today we're going to talk about AIC and really focus on Farabee's communication and just kind of that whole topic. Farabee got her first buttons in April of 2020 whenever she was almost a year old. It was actually a week before her first birthday. So she's been communicating this way for the majority of her life. Um, the first year of her life, she did happen to learn to ring a bell for a dog trick thing. So she already was familiar with pressing buttons. So I think that did help just because she was familiar with pressing something. Um, it didn't ever mean anything. It was literally a trick. Like I just would put it down and be like, ring the bell and she would do it and get a cookie and that was it. Um, so she knew how to press. So I do think that helped her just kind of from the beginning to like know that you know, it's possible to press something, you know, cause a lot of animals may not know that. So she knew that was possible. I don't necessarily think it made a difference in like the long term of her learning language like this because that bell didn't mean anything. It was literally a trick. I think the only benefit of that was just that she learned that pressing something sometimes would do something. Touch. Okay, that was good. That was a try. Good girl. Good touch. 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 Good girl, yes! Good girl, yes! Good girl, yay! <laughs> yes! You're so smart! Yes, good girl! Good bell! Good job! Good girl! That's when it clicked right there, huh? That's it. That's it. You did it. Do it again. Don't bite the button. Don't bite the top of it. Touch. Touch. Good girl, yes! Good job! Good girl, good girl! You're so smart! You're so smart, girl! Yes! Touch it! Good girl, yes! Good girl! Good girl! Oh my gosh, good job! We started out with four buttons and she pressed on her very first day. And I feel like she knew what she was saying because she had stuff that she knew, right? She had play and she had um, walk. And like, those are things that she's very familiar with those words. So I feel like when she pressed them that she really did understand that it was probably gonna result in something. Um, and especially because whenever she did press, I did the action. So that really helps a lot. You know, whenever they press, obviously do the thing as much as you possibly can. Like if they say play, then go play if possible. If they say walk, go walk if possible. You know, that kind of stuff. Good job, yes. Good job. Good girl! Good job! It's fun to drink out of a cup, huh? Okay, here. Fairby has always loved to drink out of a mug or a cup, and I have to hold those things for her, so I thought that would be a fun button to add as one of our first buttons since it's high value to her and she took to it on the first day. And then there's some animals who will take a few months before they have their first press, but then whenever they do start pressing, then it seems like they pick it up just as quickly as those who pressed on the first day. People wanna know how they know what button to press, right? Because they're not reading it. So from the best that I can figure out is by placement. I think it could be a little bit to do with smell too, like maybe she can smell it, um, like smell which ones you know, that she's touched more or something. I don't know. Dogs' noses are insane, so there's a really good chance that a scent could have something to do with it, but from what I can tell, she's not identifying it by looking at the stickers on the button. So 
it, I feel like that's just for me. By the way, if you have questions, leave them below. I'm happy to help you. I'm happy to answer any questions you have around this. We have been using ASC for communication since 2020. So almost four years now. I made an AIC quick start guide. I'll link it below for y'all. So it tells you the best practices for how to actually go about teaching this. Helps you kind of figure out your button layout. Helps you kind of think ahead about, you know, what, what you really want from this and to make sure it's really positive and fun for them. So I will link that below for y'all. This is something that I wish I had had back whenever I started, which I feel like is how I make everything that I sell basically. <laughs> That's how the service dog planner came to. It's like just everything that I wish that somebody had just had in a book for me. So I made that for AIC and I made it for service dogs too. So I will link, I'll actually link both of them below for y'all. So a lot of people have called me out because Faraby says stuff that kind of is insider language and it doesn't make sense. Um, an example of this is she had used her went button whenever her puzzle uh, was empty and they were like, why did you not tell her to say it's gone or teach her gone? And the thing is, it's, it doesn't matter what word she uses, it's the point that is past tense. And to her, and to me too, like that's all that matters. You have to think your animals who are communicating this way, they are communicating with you and your family. Like they are not gonna go out into the world and have to go do job interviews or go to school, you know what I mean? So they're not gonna interact with people in the way of like, it really matters that you're using these words exactly right. Like it, it matters as long as you know what they're talking about. <laughs> But basically that's why I don't correct therapy and why I'm just like, yeah, when, whenever something's in the past, because it's in the past, she is right. I don't think she's ever used all done, but like maybe five times. So went is her go-to <laughs> and I just don't see a reason to correct it. I just don't. So not everything they say is gonna make perfect sense to like the outside world. And it's kind of like moms with toddlers. You know how like, if you ever are around like a mom and their little kid, sometimes their little kid might say something that you're like, what is that? And it's like, oh, that means that's this, you know, and they know, like mom just knows. So it's kind of that whole thing too, where you just kind of know like, okay, they're definitely trying to say this thing and maybe it might not even be the right word, but like you can kind of, you can put it together if that makes sense. Um, and also that brings me to another point. Not everything that she says makes perfect sense to me. A lot of it does. I would say, honestly, probably like 80% of what she says does make sense. And I feel like the other 20% that doesn't make sense to me probably does make sense to her. But because she only has 105 words and also this is a second language to her, there is a really good chance that she has something in her head that she's thinking that she's saying that she doesn't have the buttons to, to press for. Um, or maybe she might think a word is different than it is. You know what I mean? She may have a meaning of something mixed up. I feel like I got a fuzzy or something in the air and it got in my throat. Yes, baby. What's going on? You want to help me finish the video? Let's, let's do tricks. You want to do tricks? Okay, we can do tricks. Good. So a lot of people think that Faraby gets treats for talking and she doesn't. And then whenever I tell them that she doesn't, then they get really mad at me and call me a monster because I don't give her treats for talking. <laughs> and this is like such a weird thing. There are people out there in this world who want to believe that the only reason that they would, that animals would press is because of they're getting a treat. But then whenever you say it's not, they're not getting a treat, then those same people get mad at you because they think your dog should get a treat for this. But it's not anything to get a treat for, it's talking. Or it's, a, it's not really talking, but you know what I mean. It's a means of communication. I feel like if I were to give her treats for talking or communicating, whatever you wanna call it, then it would be steering her to press differently or press more just to get treats. And that's not what I want. I want it to come from her heart, whatever she wants to say or her mind, however you wanna look at it. Like I want it to come from her. Like I don't want her to ever think, well, if I press a button, I'm gonna get a treat. I don't want her to ever think that she has to press. You know, she, she can get a treat whenever she wants. She can just walk over to the pantry and ask. Like she doesn't even have a treat button. Like the way that she asks if she wants a treat is walk to the pantry. <laughs> so I don't even have a button that says that. She does have buttons for different types of food, not the actual food, but different types of things to put her food in. So she has a topple button, snoop, 
puzzle and lick mat and then just regular food button and so those are all different ways for me to um different food vehicles i guess we'll call it they're just different bowls different things but that's the only thing she has food related and then everything else is just means of communication i guess although she does have a carrot button too but that's her only actual food food because i feel like what's the harm in having a carrot button right and she really likes carrots so yeah she's not treated for it i don't know and i don't feel like that makes me a bad person though because it's supposed to be communication if i'm giving you a treat you're gonna do it to get a treat like you're not gonna do it because you want to and that's that's not communication then anyways okay the other thing that i hear a lot is oh my god it's so sad they're forced to press these buttons she's never been forced to press um whenever i put a new button out i do draw attention to it and i bring her over and say you know okay whatever the button says and i press it and then typically i'll do the action or i'll be holding the thing or whenever we were doing weather like i added rain when it was raining so i you know, I showed her. <laughs> Basically, you have to show them the button and make the button go off and then draw attention to whatever that means. And you have to do that a few times, you know, like that's that's called modeling. That's the thing that you're going to do. But that's not forcing them to press. That's never like she's, you know, you don't take their hand and like force them to press or like withhold something and force them to press. You don't do that. It's just teaching. It's not, there's no force and the other thing she doesn't have to press like if she never presses a button again all her needs are going to be met it just doesn't matter she doesn't have to say anything ever again so another thing that comes up a lot is that talking dogs are depressed and this is just a really bad rumor that got started i don't even know how that got started the main subject of that whole entire story that whole entire fake story I actually know them and it's not that's not a true story i know other dogs who have buttons who were really anxious before and it's actually helped them a lot because they have a way to kind of confirm things now and so it makes them feel more secure so Farabee is actually in a study at uc san diego about all of the talking dogs and how all of this works and we do have meetings every so often and nothing has ever been mentioned to us about depression in animals with this we've not heard anything about like any adverse effects like i haven't heard anything about adverse effects at all and i feel like they would have told us and i also feel like because we are in groups together where we actually talk amongst each other and no one has reported anything like that and i've been in this since she's had buttons since 2020 but i've been in the actual button community since 2021 since like february i think of 2021 and there have been no reports that i have seen personally from anyone within the community who actually uses the buttons regularly and has for, you know, four or five years now, I have not heard of anyone having depression issues with their animals. Like I said, to my knowledge, this is just a completely false story that has just gotten legs somehow. And then people think you're abusing your dog because of you have buttons and they've heard a fake story. If you even just are like thinking, well, I don't know, that sounds like it could make them depressed. Think about this. How is it going to make you more depressed to be able to advocate for yourself? Like what part of advocating for yourself and being able to ask for things that you need and being able to, you know, maybe say you would like to do something different today um, or even just say a thing, you know what I mean? Like just express yourself in a different way. Like what part of that sounds depressing? I mean, assuming, assuming that people are not doing it with ill intention. Yes, it would be depressing if somebody's forcing you to press a button and you don't want to. But I'm just talking about like the way that we have it where she doesn't, she can talk if she wants to, doesn't have to if she doesn't. I don't see how that could even be depressing. It would be like saying, well, I'm depressed because now I can write or because now I can speak or now I can type or now I can text or whatever. Like I'm depressed because I learned this new form of communication. Like it doesn't, it doesn't even go together. Um, and also for people who are like, well, no, they're, they're becoming more self-aware. We are becoming more aware that they are self-aware. <laughs> they already are self-aware. And like, if you've ever had dogs and cats and things in your life, you probably have told them stuff and talked to them about things and told them or said stuff around them and stuff that they've heard and that they're like, oh shit, you know, what, you know, whatever the problem is, I guarantee you they've heard you and they've listened just like little kids. Like they may not... They may not understand like 
I'm talking about dogs now. They may not be able to like communicate back to you and ask questions about it, but just because they didn't have a way to communicate before doesn't mean that their wheels weren't turning and they weren't thinking like, oh my God, about certain things that have happened in your house. You know what I mean? Like they are still there. <laughs> Like just because they can communicate and we know that they can think that way doesn't mean they weren't doing it the whole time. So there's that. Another thing, why don't I add a cuss button because she uses Dinah? Because I don't really want her to use that as a bad word. She chose to do that and I don't stop her from it because honestly, I think it's funny, but I don't want her to do it. You know what I mean? Like it is, it's funny, it's funny, it's, it is funny, right? But at the same time, I'm not, I'm not exactly thrilled that she wants to say bad words. Um, so she's not ever gonna get a real bad word button. She can pretend with her words and use them as bad words if she wants to. But I don't really want her using bad language anyway, so I'm not gonna add a button like that. But the other thing, um, it just, if we have a million buttons, we have 105 buttons. I don't want to add any more nonsense buttons, like just for novelty. We had a good day today. Let's do tricks. Um, I don't think we need to do any more tricks. We had a lot of tricks already. I'm sorry, we don't need to. It would be irresponsible for me to give you more snacks. It's really important for you to know that she uses the word Dinah as a bad word. Well, I'm sorry. Okay, listen, is, are you, is it that big of a deal? We're gonna cuss it? Okay, well listen, maybe we can just do one trick. Where's your foot? Yes. I love you. I love you. I love you too. Oh, oh, this is a good one. A lot of people say that I talk too fast for her. Obviously I don't because <laughs> she's learned to talk this much. So I don't feel like I talk too fast for her at all. Um, I'm not gonna change my pace of talking to talk to her unless I can tell that she is not understanding something. If I can see it on her face that she's needing me to slow it down, then I will. But typically um, she doesn't look like that at me. She doesn't look at me like, you know, whoa, whoa, slow down. She also has a hmm button. So if she ever does not understand what I'm saying, she'll ask me that way. I don't know. I just don't see a reason to change my pace. I know I have seen certain families where they'll talk to their dog like, do you want to, and it's like, oh, <laughs> come on. Like, surely you give your dog more credit than that. Anyway, I don't think I talk too fast for her. Um, we've gotten this far, so. I guess it's been fine. Another thing that I see that I've gotten quite a bit on the spider video is that people are like, I don't believe you, you're a liar. I don't really care. I'm documenting what's happening and you can believe it or you cannot. I'm just sharing. I'm documenting what's happening and I'm sharing. The other thing too is some people have said that it's hard to believe because we could just say the buttons say whatever we want them to say, like in the video. And I totally understand what you're saying. I totally get it. But what y'all don't know on the internet, those outside watching, watching the videos that we send, we also submit these to um, UC San Diego for a study and they have a overhead view map of our boards. So it's, even if we wanted to like go through and like dub the audio or whatever and make it say different stuff, the people at the study who actually matter, who are the ones who really matter in this, the ones who are collecting the data and the ones who are analyzing the data and actually gonna tell us what's possible with this, they have a map of our boards like from above so they can see so the only like it wouldn't even be possible like it, it would not even be possible because they know like what they know where the buttons are you know what i'm saying so they it wouldn't be possible for us to fool them now i guess we could fool people on the internet but like there's no reason to because they already say cool stuff like there's no reason there's no reason to to change it for the internet because it's already me, you know? I mean, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't already cool that they're doing this. Oh, and the other thing too, a lot of our buttons automatically log. So the ones that light up that y'all see, um, those automatically log into a database. So we don't have to log those. We don't have to say anything. We don't have to submit video. They just already log into a database. Um, and then the ones that don't light up, they do not log. 
So we do have to submit data for that if we want that to be included in the study. Um, someone the other day called me out about, oh, well, she wasn't pressing on the one of the buttons that I said because it didn't light up and like they thought that I added that in, but not all of our buttons light up. We have 105 and I think we have 30, 28, 28 that light up. So it's, you know, about 25% of our board lights up. I understand that can be confusing, but that's what's going on there. That's why some don't light up when she presses. 77, 77 of our buttons don't light up at all, so that's why. By the way, I'll link all of this below for y'all, and if you're interested in sound quality between Connect and all the buttons that we have, I have a sound quality video that I'll link for y'all too. Let me know what are your questions around AIC. Um, I'm happy to answer questions whenever I can. I want y'all to be able to do this and be successful. Also, I do have a whole entire page of resources on my website devoted to AIC, so I'll link that below for y'all. I always put the most updated coupons I have for Fluent Pet Buttons over there. I try to post them on social media too, but sometimes like social media stuff goes by so fast, so you kind of can miss them easier. So if you ever are shopping for buttons, go check my website because I always put, like I said, the most current code that we have up there. Um, and also follow us on Instagram and join our button broadcast because whenever I have discount codes that are like really good ones to give away, sometimes I get 30% offs, then I always uh, offer it to that crowd first. I don't have any right now though. <laughs> So join our button broadcast over on Instagram though if you're interested in that because like I said I let them know first whenever I have stuff like that. I don't know. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that we hear that's just really weird. Oh and the other thing too that I've gotten on the shorts lately on the talking dog shorts is people are saying like let her be a dog. She needs to go outside and play more. She needs to do this more and obviously I'm assuming they're not watching the long form videos because we pretty much go and go do fun stuff with her involved every single time. I mean, she's my service dog, so she's definitely not hurting for activities. She stays busy, she goes anywhere I go, and of course, she also gets to go do special things that are just for her, like go to the P-A-R-K. Um, she also has a button to ask for that, by the way, which we're not gonna say that word out loud right now because I don't really wanna go there, but she gets to go and do a lot, and like I said, she is my service dog, so she's with me 24 hours a day, seven days a week. She she basically, I mean, she gets to do more than any animal I've had in my life, honestly, just because she's with me all the time. Like it's impossible for her to not get to do stuff because she's with me all the time. Thanks for hanging out with us today. I hope that this was super helpful for you. I hope you got a lot out of this AIC video. I feel like I haven't done one like this before. I will link an AIC playlist for y'all. I have a few other full length videos on here around AIC. Like I said, I'm absolutely happy to answer any questions that you have, so be sure to leave those below. I hope you have an awesome day, and we will see you soon. Bye!